Would you like to walk two dogs at the same time? Watch this video. It's important, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'm very big on making sure that your dogs are walking in migration mode at your side, ears back, relaxed, no barking, no lunging, no pulling, no sniffing, nothing. We just want the dogs to follow. Well, one thing that's really important is that, you know, if you wanna walk two dogs at the same time, then you've gotta master the walk with one dog. Well, actually, come on, Midna. Actually, I trained these dogs about five weeks ago and I'm actually gonna be teaching the owner how to now walk the dogs together. She's been walking the dogs by themselves individually because you know, if we have lunging and we have barking, you can't put two dogs together again until you master the obedience and the leadership with one dog. Then you can put them together because more of anything is more of everything, right? Typically, I always have the, the bigger dog on the inside, all right, because I don't want the bigger dog to crowd out the dog on the outside. And once we start walking, the, one, the dog on the inside is actually in the position just like they're the only dog. The dog on the outside needs to have a longer line to where that dog can uh, go even three quarters of the body length back on the outside of the other dog. A common mistake is when people are walking two dogs, they will walk the dog and the outside line is too tight coming over the back of the dog on the inside. And you have to remember, we you know, they, they are aware of each other's space as well. So it's important not to crowd them in this. We wanna make sure that the dog on the outside has plenty of room to feel comfortable and follow just like the dog on the inside is. Another popular thing that people will do, they will use a leash that has a coupler on the end, which means, you know, it's a single line, it's a leash with, and then it spouts off and you can attach two dogs to it, one on each end of that. I don't recommend that because then when you go to correct or disagree, you're correcting both dogs at the same time. And the fact is, is that when I'm walking, if Kit makes a mistake, then I'm gonna correct Kit. If I need to direct Midna, I'm gonna direct Midna and it won't affect Kit at all. We've gotta be fair. We cannot correct one dog for something the other dog is doing. Besides that, when you do have a coupler, it really is gonna incite pulling because they're just gonna feel that together and they're just gonna start becoming like sled dogs. If you would like to learn more about dog training, then please click the subscribe button, turn on all notifications, and you will be notified about our latest videos. The other thing that's important is making sure when I'm doing this, I have two lightweight six foot lines because they need to fit comfortably in my hand but also I want the lightweight line on the dog because I need to have a long enough line that, Mid that, that Midna, who I'm putting on the outside, can go all the way back on the other side of Kit, all right? When I am walking, I don't have sloppy lines like this. I'm gonna gather it up, keep it close to my body, and so therefore if I have to let go so I can correct Kit, or if I can correct Midna, and then I can let go with my left hand, but I have it gathered right here. I'm just gonna make that nice loop around. So you can see it's not sloppy. There's nice control, no tension on the dogs. And my visual of what is correct is Kit, again, does not pass me, and Midna does not pass Kit, okay? So this is Care, uh, the owner of Kit and Midna. So now what we're gonna do is when you go ahead and gather it, I go ahead and gather it just like that and keep it close. And we'll start them like this. So you're gonna be starting a, a real quick left. So you're just gonna turn to the dogs and just your brain's gonna wanna hold tension. So it's kind of hard sometimes to let go with your left hand because you like, feel like the dogs are gonna get away. Mm. You'll get comfortable. What matters is that you've got their, their mindset, they're in tune, they're calm, they're following you, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and have you gather the line like this. Keep it close to your body low. Now you're just gonna go ahead and start to turn left in front of the dogs. Go ahead and go. Just Start walking, they'll fall right in. Come this way. Now correct mid to back. Good, straight back. Again, there you go. Just like that. How's that feel? That's great. Let's just say Midna, or yeah, Midna, who's on the outside, goes behind Kit's butt and gets in the inside. You're not gonna stop and steer Midna out, you're gonna keep walking and as she's walking, slowly bring her out from in between you and Kit and bring her out on the outside. But you need to do it when you're moving. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because if you stand still and all you do is pull the line, you're, you're gonna end up making a lot of pressure and it can hurt her. You wanna keep the brain moving so you can have her feet walk into the position that you're steering her into. Yeah. Go ahead and start your left again. How's it feel? 
Good. Yeah. Good. And is this a good spot for Kit to be in too? Yeah, so keep in yeah. mind, Kit needs to be right where, go ahead and stop for a second, put them both in a sit. Sit. Give them a chance to succeed. So when you say sit, wait a minute, and then you're gonna show one, but just slow that down a little bit so it's not hectic, okay? okay? When you're walking, that leash comes out of your hand and goes straight down to the collar. Kit's starting to come out just a little bit, so you'd wanna correct Kit back because you don't let Midna pass Kit. It's not because Midna's being uh, submissive to Kit. It's just because that's your line that don't go past me. That's your visual is what I'm saying. So let's just do another lap or two. And then when you start walking, go ahead and let go and correct Kit back if you need to, and then just pay attention. And again, Midna can function anywhere and just kind of float on the outside, anywhere beside or behind. Okay. okay. Just not, I just make sure my line on the outside is not so long that allows her to go right behind him. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So keep your right hand, get it close to your body. Cause your right hand started to come out and pull the dogs. Cause mm -hmm. your brain wants to steer them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you just keep it close to your body. Just keep going. Don't worry about her. Just keep going. Nice. There she goes. She's getting in the rhythm. Nice. Doctor, say, come on, Minna. Come on. There you go. Good. Let's go ahead and stop right here. Have her start. Just now easy. Tell him sit. Sit. See, you didn't even have to correct that time. Give him a chance to succeed. That was excellent. How'd that feel? That was great. It was awesome. So keep in mind, anytime you work two dogs together in any exercise, you've got to master it with the dogs individually before you ever put the dogs together. Um, this was great. I was planning on doing a video, and then they came today for their lesson. I'm like, let's film it. Your dog will never be the dog you want him to be until you're the leader they need you to be. Have a great day. For today's Rough Recap, it's important to remember that you can't walk two dogs unless you have a disciplined, structured walk with each one first. Also, make sure that the tallest, largest dog is always on the inside by you. Make sure also that the outside dog has plenty of line for comfort and ease. And two six-foot leashes are the best tool to use. Your dog will never be the dog you want him to be until you're the leader they need you to be. Have a great day. Till the next lesson, we just thank you so much for listening. We hope you gained some value. And again, your dog will never be what you want him to be until you're the leader they need you to be. And we just thank you for your time and we'll see you next time.